guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about advice to beginner medical billing and coding job seekers. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I have been a medical coder for over 10 years. I really love to share the things that I know with all of you. So I hope you'll take a second, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and at the end of this video helps you, I hope that you will share it. So let's get started. Okay, the big question that I get a lot is, I am a brand new medical coder and everybody's asking for experience. How am I supposed to get my first job? We're gonna talk about that today, but I have a little side note. <laughs> I hope that you'll stick around towards the end because you guys know I am a fashionista and I have a little bit of a fun thing to announce towards the end of the video. So I hope that you'll stick around for it. All right, the big question, how do you get a job and everybody's asking for experience and you're just looking everywhere and everybody wants one to three to five years of experience. How is anybody supposed to hire you? Okay, here's the thing. When you are brand new at a school, you just have your credential. The thing that they won't tell you a lot of times like in school or like at the recruiter's place, right? Is that it is difficult for brand new medical coders to get a job in the beginning. This is a part of the field. Don't ask me why. If I had my way, oh, trust me, I would hire brand new coders in a heartbeat because brand new medical coders are very hungry and they want to learn more. I mean, I have seen really good ones not be able to find a job and they got very frustrated with it and they just went back to doing whatever. And so then they have this credential that they do nothing with. And I think that is unfortunate. Uh, I wish that would change in this industry, but it is what we have all gone through. I mean, I went through it. I was very diligent for two whole months before I got a job and I went through a temporary agency. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, what temporary agency do you recommend? So <laughs> a lot of times temporary agencies are very small. I mean, it's, it's like a headhunter, right? Or maybe it's a company and they're usually like local to that area. So you have to <laughs> do your research guys. Uh, look, I was gonna say look in a phone book, but people don't use phone books anymore. Uh, but look online and see if there's a temporary agency in your area. Now the temporary agency that I went through was one that specifically catered to medical professions. So they looked for doctors, nurses, uh, MAs and PAs and medical coders. So that was how I was able to find my first job because I applied with them and trust me, I was like, I don't want a temporary job, I want a real job. But you have to crawl before you walk. <laughs> so um, the principal for my school, because I had to go back to him and ask him because I was applying everywhere and everybody was turning me down. And they all said the same thing, you know, you're doing really good on your test, your little quiz that we give you, but you don't have any experience and our corporate says that, you know, you have to have experience, so please get some and then come back. So I'm like, how am I supposed to do this? So I had gone back to my school and the principal put me in touch with a lady that he knew that ran, ran a temporary agency. And so I was able to get signed on with them. So I put in my resume with them and they said, okay, we have this assignment available, but it's only available for three months. It's a temporary assignment. And basically they're gonna choose who they want. They want only one candidate, but they want three right now to choose from. So I said, okay, so I did this and at the end, I didn't get picked and it's, it's, it's fine. They made their choice and it, it was a good thing because I ended up getting an even better job <laughs> after this one. And so it, it was just, that was the first step that I had to take. And trust me, I looked everywhere for two months and sometimes people say, well, that was, that's just a short time. You know, I've been looking for an entire year. So it's going to depend on how you are looking at your goal. What is your goal? You want to get a job as a medical coder or a biller, right? And you are just, you're just trying to get your foot in the door somewhere. It's all going to start with how your resume looks. I tell you guys this all the time, two pages for your resume max. Okay. If you have a long history, long work history, put the most pertinent things to this position down on your resume. Look at the job listing. What is it asking for? Is it asking for you to have a computer experience? Is it asking for you to have customer service experience or cash handling or something like that? If you're doing like the billing, um, anything, what, what are these 
uh, job listings asking for. And your resume is not one size fits all. You have to cater to what they're asking for. If you possess any of the skills that are in this job listing, you need to make sure that you put that, you have it on your resume so that the system, when it when you submit your resume, the system's gonna be able to pick it up. Okay, well, we recognize this person wrote this and they, they have this, and so we're gonna go ahead and, and submit this on. However it goes, but you know, everybody relies on computers. So with that said, if you possess those skills, working with um, computer systems like Microsoft Office and, and Word and PowerPoint and all this other stuff. I mean, if you've got that, put that on your resume. Make sure that everything is spelled out. Do not put any abbreviations. That is the hugest thing. Do not put abbreviations. And yes, I know this video is about <laughs> uh, finding a job, but it starts with your resume and making sure that when you are looking and applying a, at a place, that your resume best suits what's going on in that job listing, okay? And a lot of people say, well, I don't see a lot of jobs in my area. There must not be a lot of jobs because they're putting in medical coder or medical biller. There's a lot of different names that medical coders fall under. So you have to look under health uh, information technician, uh, medical records technician or medical records tech, or um, healthcare information, or healthcare, in, uh, healthcare medical records, something like that. You gotta change the name. You can't just say medical coder, medical biller, because a lot of times you, you will get like a limited pool. But once you put in different words, like um, medical records tech, a bunch more are gonna pull up. And you have to read the job listing, because a lot of times in the title, it's not gonna say. And I, and I have the, um, the uh, playlist, <laughs> I was gonna say job listings, the playlist, I have the playlist of all of the uh, job listings review videos that I've done, check them out guys. And, I, and I'm telling you, there's different names that they use all the time. And then when you're looking at the listing, it'll tell you that they want these credentials or these credentials. And I've even been able to find some that say, this is an entry level position, we are willing to train which is really exciting because when you see that, it's, it's like, okay, good. You know, this is somebody that can really let me in. <laughs> so you have to have a really good resume and you got to keep that in mind when you're looking up these jobs. Look for the different various words, okay? Medical records, medical records tech, uh, medical clerk, something like that, okay? So look under those titles and see um, something with administration, excuse me, administration, healthcare administration or something like that anything, just use those different words and different titles to be able to find uh, more <laughs> job listings that will come up for medical coders or medical billers. Now, another thing is your cover letter. Your cover letter needs to be a slam dunk. Look at the place that you want to apply. If you wanna work in general hospital, let's just put that out there, okay? Yes, I'm dating myself. <laughs> That was a good show, okay? <laughs> and for all you kids out there, it was a soap opera, okay? <laughs> Which was really big. I think it like in the 70s and the 80s. At least I know it was big in the 80s. I used to watch it with my grandma. <laughs> anyway, so with, um, you, you wanna apply a general hospital, right? So go to the internet and what do you do when you're interested in, in a place? You do your research. So go to their um, hospital homepage, see what information you can find out. Know the place that you want to apply, okay? So this way, when it comes down time for like an interview, you can know a little bit of something because sometimes they'll ask you, what do you know about us? What do you know about our company? And that can go for anything, even a, a small private practice. It can even go for that. So know where you're applying, okay? And you don't have to memorize anything, just read over it, you know, at least have some idea. And if you can find out, and if it tells you, right, in the job listing, what, um, what kind of computer system do they use? Sometimes they'll say, you know, if you have Epic experience, if you have Meditech experience, then you can go on YouTube. You don't have to have experience, guys. This is, this is a thing that you, you can do. You can go on YouTube, okay? You're not gonna say that you have experience, but you're gonna watch, because they have those um, those tutorial videos 
on Epic. They have it for Meditech. They have it for HPF. They have a bunch of different ones. Look on there. Watch the tutorial video. On your cover letter, you can say, I am a brand new medical coder looking to get in um, somewhere. You know, of course, I'm just saying this. Don't, don't put it like that. <laughs> Make it well written, guys, because they're paying attention to that. If I was looking and I was doing the hiring and I saw somebody on there who, who used letters like you instead of Y-O-U, they just put you or, you know what I mean? Just like really just not good sentence structure. Next, next, next. This is a person, when I see something like that, that's a person that is not paying attention to detail, okay? <laughs> to detail. So make sure that you're paying attention to detail. Now on your cover letter, you can say, I notice that you use Epic. Okay. I'm just going to use Epic as an example. Okay. I notice that you use Epic at your facility. Uh, while I am brand new, uh, to the, uh, health information field, uh, I did watch a video on YouTube about the tutorial for Epic or Meditech or, uh, HPF or whatever the case may be, whatever system of, of electronic health record they're using. Put that on there. Okay. Watch the video. Okay. Don't just put it on there, <laughs> but we'll actually watch the video. So in case they do ask you, okay, well, we know this person has done their research. You have to do your part guys. Is it a little bit more work than maybe you were anticipating? Probably because a lot of people don't say this. I know I didn't know this <laughs> when I first started. So you guys are getting the benefit of my knowledge here. All right. <laughs> and I'm just trying to help you guys. So, um, when they're asking for one to three to five years experience, apply anyway. They are never going to know that you even exist if you don't put yourself in front of them. If you don't give them your resume, they're never going to know that you are a new medical coder and you are looking for a job. They're never going to know who you are. Why? Because they don't have your resume. So you have to make sure that you are sending out your resume, that you are being active. You have to be proactive, guys. I've gotten an email from a viewer. He said he applied to three places and he doesn't understand why no one is calling him back. Bro, you have to apply everywhere, regardless if they're asking for experience. Apply, because that cover letter is gonna show what, what you are going to bring to the table. You can tell them about your talents. You can tell them about you don't have to necessarily explain if there's been a long absence, but you can say, well, I did take some time off to raise my children and, and I'm ready to get back into the workforce. You don't have to, to write a book. Okay. The cover letter is only going to be one page and at the most it should be four paragraphs and not even full paragraphs. It needs to be to the point. Okay. So don't write a huge long thing, but just enough to get them to be a little bit interested in you because trust me, you know, you may stand out just by saying, well, I'm brand new, but I noticed that you guys use Epic. And so I went on uh, YouTube and I watched the tutorial videos and it's very fascinating and I'm very excited and I would really love a chance to, to uh, get to work, <laughs> you know, something. Uh, I'm thinking this off the top of my head as I go, obviously. <laughs> so uh, that's what you have to do. You have to be willing to apply everywhere and they're going to tell you no. Okay. Keep that in mind. They will tell you no. Be ready for that. There's going to be a lot of rejection in the beginning, but you have to just keep going. Now you can go into other avenues. If you can't get a job in medical coding, you can go through medical billing because you do not have to be certified to be a medical biller. A lot of times you just have to have a high school diploma or a GED. Okay. Um, yes, there are credentials. There's a credential, the CPB for uh, billing, but you don't have to have it. I usually recommend it for people who have their own business because I think it would give more confidence to the people that uh, maybe they're get doing contracts for, okay, that they are credentialed, okay? But if you are just coming in off the street and applying at a medical billing place, all you need is a high school diploma or a GED. Okay. So that's with that. Okay. And then you can, you, it won't give you coding experience, but it will get you around codes and it'll sort of get you familiar with the industry. And then you can put that on your resume and say, I have uh, experience billing and reviewing codes and things like that. And so maybe that might help you get in. Uh, you can also apply for medical records. 
just being in the hospital or being in a doctor's office and medical records. And that way you can get in that way as well, because again, it's not gonna give you medical coding experience, but it will get you around the people that are going to be hiring for those medical coders, okay? And make your goals clear that you are wanting to be a medical coder or a medical biller, okay? Make it clear what you want, be direct. And when they start telling you, okay, well, we have an entry level position and they start telling you all these things about what they're, what they're going to do and what they expect, don't get overwhelmed. Okay. It just seems like a lot because you've never done it before, right? You're going to be brand new. So that's why it's going to seem like it's overwhelming, but you did not make a mistake guys. Okay. (laughs) Whatever you do, don't get so overwhelmed that you feel like you made a mistake because you didn't. This is just the beginning part. This is the most exciting part. Well, until you get into it and you have that aha moment. (laughs) Um, But this is exciting in the beginning, being brand new and it's gonna be this new adventure and you're gonna be building a career because that's what medical coding and billing is. Um, Medical coding is a career, okay? It's It's a career for some billers who do their own thing, right? Um, but for medical coding, it is a career and it is a wonderful career. It's, it's provided a very nice life for me and, you know, I'm able to take care of myself. So, you know, and then I get everything from this, from this career, like a lot of intellectual stimulation, which is what I love and, and just being able to read because that's what it is. It's a lot of reading and, you know, working with very intelligent people, which is another thing that I love. Okay. So it's, it's very exciting, but you have to be into it as well. You have to be willing to give 120% guys. That is what it is because the more you study or the more you do your research, right? And a lot of times when I get questions, Um, from people, it's like, are you guys doing your research? You know, go to the websites or go here or go there. You know, you have the questions, look for the answers. Okay. So when you're, when you're doing those things, it's going to help you to better know where to find your answers. Okay. So that way you are a, uh, you are a efficient coder as well. Okay. So you have all of these really good traits. You just got to show them. (laughs) You got to show your employer, you got to show wherever you're working that they did make a good decision hiring you, even though you have no little to no experience. All right. But don't let that one to three to five years deter you. The only time that they're really probably going to put their foot down. Absolutely. Is if it is for a remote position. Now we are in the middle of a pandemic still. Okay. So if you are brand new, apply at a place that you have to go like a hospital or doctor's office nine times out of ten they're going to send you home okay even though yes to be working at home uh they really genuinely want you to have experience first but because this is this uh there's been some concessions made okay (laughs) and uh they're sending their people home but expect that once this gets under control, that you are going to have to go back to the facility and then you're going to be in the facility working. So for right now, maybe yes, okay, maybe. Depends on where you are, all right? Um, I have heard of some people still being at the hospital too, so it, it, it all depends. But now, we are not around patients, so keep that in mind. That's a, for this, this, we are never around patients for medical coding on the medical coding side. If you're doing billing, then you will have probably some like phone uh, interactions with patients. It just depends on, on what is happening in your place, your facility. So make sure that you are doing all that. Don't get discouraged. Sometimes it takes a while, okay, uh, to find a job, but don't give up and don't have that one size fits all approach with your resume. Update it as you need to. And if they tell you no, right? If they turn you down for the job, like you apply and they turn you down, if there's another job opening that pl- that uh, pops up again, go for it again. Keep applying because if they see you applying more than once, they're going to say, okay, this person really wants to be with us. Let's go ahead and give them a try. 
because I had to do that myself, okay? <laughs> I had to apply twice. The first time that I applied here, at the, where I am now, um, the position was a really good position, but uh, when I did the interview, everything went great, but they didn't hire me the first round. So when I uh, saw the job listing open up again, it was for a higher position, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go for it. And everybody around me told, told me, no, don't do it. You know, they'll just tell you no. Okay, well, what's the worst that's going to happen? They've already told me no, right? <laughs> they already didn't give me the job the first time. So there's really no harm in applying again. So it was again that I applied and I got it. So I'm just saying it happens, but you have to be persistent. So that's my message for today. Yes, it is possible to get a job with no experience, but you just have to be proactive, okay? So be proactive and get your resume out there. Make sure that it looks good with no abbreviations. All right, and to round out my video today, next week, um, I thought of doing something fun, okay? Now, you don't have to participate, uh, but if you are on Instagram, I am on Instagram at Medical Coding with Blue, all one word, and Blue is B-L-E-U. <laughs> um, I am going to be doing a salute to lace. Yes, I am a fashionista, and I love to wear lace. This beautiful dress, lilac, beautiful dress, pinky that I call it, <laughs> uh, it is by Thalia Sodi, and I got it on sale at Macy's. Now, I am going to be doing a photo every day, <laughs> Monday through Friday. So it's going to be August the 24th through August the 28th, 2020. Uh, and it's going to be my salute to lace. So I'm going to have a lace top or a lace dress on every day next week. So I hope you'll uh, go to my Instagram and check it out. <laughs> Hit a like on it if you want to. Um, or you can um, show me your lace dress and uh, you can tag me in it, you know, tag me at Medical Coding with Blue. <laughs> and I would love to see you guys. And so anyway, uh, but yes, that is my fun little announcement. I just thought it would be something fun to do. So because, you know, me, guys, I love clothes. Just because I'm a book nerd doesn't mean I don't have to love clothes as well, okay? And you know, when I'm at home, I like to dress up even still. I'm just saying. Because yes, while I had been at home, currently I'm back at my facility. Right now, temporarily, until we get all this thing worked out, <laughs> I am at the facility, so I'm still dressing up. And even when I was quarantined at home, I was still dressing up because you can see it on my Instagram. So I hope that you will join me in this fun little thing. If not, you can just enjoy the outfits. <laughs> um, but I will go ahead and close this one out. So I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you all next time. So if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see you all next time. Bye.